True North is an autobiographical poem. Armitage comes from a village in Yorkshire, and uh, the poem is about his return there once he's left to become a student. True North is also the compass point that sailors navigate by. In other words, it's something that's always reliable and that will always bring you home. And so the poem is also about homecoming and identity, what makes us who we are. The first two lines are packed full of alliteration, a device that writers use to make things memorable. And uh, perhaps he's suggesting that our upbringing is what is most memorable and precious to us. However, the return journey doesn't feel like a happy co homecoming. He hitched a ride, but he describes it as bummed. And obviously another meaning of this is depressed. This is echoed with the guards van, which is cold, and the stations which are abandoned and unmanned. And then the whole landscape is iced with snow. All these suggest a metaphor for his feelings about the home that he's returning to. Although it might be a true north, it's not one that he looks forward to here. In fact, he shows that with not much to crow about. The internal rhyme here of snow and crow further suggests that his overriding impression about home is its coldness and a crow of course is black, depressing, perhaps a reminder of death. In the second verse we get a sense of the older Armitage looking back at his student self. He marvels at the fact that he'd changed so much in only one term away and there's a slight sort of sneering view about the place that he's attended Portsmouth's Poly. A poly was considered much lesser than a university and you needed far lower grades to get in. And so he's sort of dismissive of his younger self. The younger self looked on the village and describes it as stopped. But the older self now remarks that it looked stopped as though the reality is quite different and he appreciates it now. Similarly, the old student sees the houses as a clutch of houses. There aren't many of them. They're hanging on, hanging on for dear life, as it were. The village is perhaps dying. But the more adult Armitage in later years might look at this image, this metaphor, as a holding together. This is what family life is all about. A more positive view. The village looks like it has been in a toy snowstorm because the village is so small, but there's also a sense of it being a picture-perfect sort of setting. Contrasting dramatically with this setting is the presentation of the Falklands. This was a war fought in the early 80s uh, by the British trying to retake the Falklands Islands from the Argentinians who had invaded and this introduction of war acts as a metonym for um, Armitage's own feelings towards the village that he's left. It is as though he is at war with his own childhood. You will remember, I hope, that a metonym is a thing that symbolises the person. In this case, the Falklands War symbolises the conflict that is going on inside the um, speaker's mind. Now the tone of the older Armitage is really quite scathing of his younger self. He looks upon his young self as ready to stir it, and that refers back, of course, to the image of the village in a snow globe, and he just wants to shake things up no matter what. The fact that he's loaded up is a telling piece of language. This verb here um, suggests that perhaps he's quite drunk. And what's he drunk with? Well, with new knowledge, new facts. But 
the um, description of them as a haul reminds us of a fishing trawler just getting everything trapped in its nets. What he's learnt is indiscriminate. He's not really got a place for it. He's just using it to attack the place that he once loved and he's ready to stir it up. Another ironic twist is that he expects to be welcomed. He's only been to a poly, not even a university, but he thinks that people should be celebrating how magnificent he is for escaping this village through an education. And a further irony is these flags or bunting is uh, what's been used in celebration when the victorious troops arrive back from the Falklands. The Falklands is just in the future, after this young self here. However, in, in a few months' time, we'll see it to be quite influential in the way that he views his home. He looks ironically now at his younger self's feeling of self-importance, celebrating himself with a fanfare. This image in the next verse two men sat locked in an arm wrestle, is a metaphor for what's going on inside Armitage's own mind. He is both the old self and the new self, both evenly matched at, um, at each other in an arm wrestle. It's as though he's wrestling himself, the old childhood set against the new ideas. The two men combined give Armitage a new simile, they are like a compass needle, pointing, as we are reminded, to true north. So, home is like this, a wrestling between the old and new. And perhaps Armitage is suggesting that um, in order to be happy in life, we have to get these imbalanced. Um, we can't have them fighting. The use of the fist is quite negative, but it doesn't lead to any kind of positive action it only leads to a dithering. Uh, so his younger self doesn't know how to cope with the divisions inside him. Interestingly, the two dates that Armitage is going to mention are Easter here and in the next verse Christmas. Now partly that's because it's an autobiographical poem and these are the periods, the holiday times, when he would have come home. But they are also an image of hope. Easter is when Jesus rises again. And so, even as he looks back on his younger self and is quite critical of him, he sees hope of rebirth, the new self that he's become. He has returned to true north, to his family, to his roots, and presumably is much happier now. Looking back again at his student days, he realises that he deliberately provoked people by calling the Falklands by their Argentinian name, Malvinas, and in doing so, criticised the British war efforts to reclaim them. Uh, some people thought that we shouldn't risk lives for a small island in the middle of the sea, and we should just let the Argentinians keep it. He looks back to Christmas at home, and the enjambment here reminds him of how precious his home is, even though he seems to be attacking it. Once he's at home, we get this image of his self-importance again. He is the host, and what he's doing is a new game. This again, perhaps, is a metaphor for his childishness, or at least what the older Armitage now sees as childishness. He's treating everything as a game, but actually... What was going on was a time of war. People were dying. British people were dying as well as Argentinians. The game itself is slightly childish. It involves stretching a tissue across a glass. But the simile here is instructive. He describes it as like a snare drum, typically the military drum that a brass band would have played. And so he's reminding us of the contrast between his younger self and the drama that was playing out on the world stage, the war in the Falklands, and how silly his actions seem compared to what was going on in the real world. 
His choice of vocabulary now seems really dismissive of his younger self. So instead of lighting up a cigarette, he sparks up. It's a casual sort of image, but sparks are also dangerous. And then he dimps his cigarette. Dimp is a kind of childish image here. It has no power behind it. It suggests his weakness. And then the cigarettes are cigs. He's becoming familiar with a stupid habit, smoking, which could easily harm him, but he completely ignores this. So we have a picture of a student who is indifferent to death, but at the same time indifferent to um, the deaths of soldiers overseas. He's someone who's not taking death seriously because he doesn't think it's going to happen to him. The next metaphor really cleverly shows us what he's playing at here. So the tissue stretched over the glass is tight, like a diaphragm, separating the uh, lungs from the stomach, the uh, air from the rest of the glass. And the tissue is literally a tissue, but tissue again reminds us of bodily tissue, which is linked once more to diaphragm. He's clearly linking what's going on in the pub, this game with the glass, with a body. And if the tissue gives, it's an image of a body dying. So the game mimics the deaths of soldiers abroad. So we end the verse with this double meaning here. The penny drops, literally, when it falls through the tissue. But of course, the other meaning of the penny drops is the idea of finally understanding, finally seeing sense. And so it's at this moment that the poet's viewpoint changes and perhaps the younger poet realises, like the older poet does, that he has become childish and inconsequential and is refusing to realise what a serious place the world can be and also what a benefit his upbringing and the village that he has left can be in supporting him. The final verse is very ironic. He realised even at the time that the guests were yawning their heads off. It didn't stop him even as he noticed that. He observes now that he lectured these people rather than welcoming them into his home and having conversation with them or having a laugh. He instead is trying to impress them with his newly acquired knowledge. Interestingly, this knowledge is about wolves and... Uh, we have to ask ourselves why all the men here appear to be violent. The previous two we met in the pub were engaged in an arm wrestle and then at Easter they invited Armitage outside presumably for a fight and now he picks on a savage hunter and perhaps Armitage is suggesting that one of the problems in the world is the savagery of men, their desire for violence. The final metaphor here of the wolves crossing over a gulf um, in the sea in Bothnia. They wait for the water to freeze and then make the crossing. Ironically, he describes the water freezing as the gulf healing over. And this is ironic because once it has healed, the wolves invade it. They come across. In other words, it simply brings death closer. This, I think, mimics what's going on with the invasion of the Falklands. But this image also helps us picture the older Armitage looking back long after the war is done. Now the gulf symbolises the distance he felt between himself, his educated self, and the village he's left behind. And in fact, he's returned back to it. It's healed over. The younger self returned like the wolf does, but the older self returns to celebrate it. He returns like the compass, true north, to find his original home and celebrate it. The structure of the poem mimics this. It's all in four-line stanzas, which we'd call quatrains. And then uh, we'll notice that the language uh, fits neatly into ten-syllable lines, very controlled, very complete, 
as though returning home has completed him. And then each line begins with a stressed syllable followed by an unstressed one, which is trochaic meter. Um, again, it has a really positive rhythm to it, reflecting his positive feelings about home now and contrasting with those negative feelings he had at the time he's describing when he was a student. Don't forget, always link the structure to the meaning of the poem in order to get the A or the A star.